Kawhi Leonard is a no-go for Game 3. His Los Angeles Clippers could really use him against Kevin Durant and the Phoenix Suns. Here's why they needed Kawhi. First quarter, off the block, it's Kevin Durant in transition. And that was Kawhi's job to guard KD. So now with everybody having to shift over, man, it's Devin Booker going to work on the Clippers. Even lost his shoe, tried to defend Marcus Morris with a shoe in his hand to no avail. Marcus like, I put too many hours in. Stay ready so you don't got to get ready. After one, we're tied at 27. Second quarter, more book show. Somehow, some way for his team. In this game, Devin Booker made a lot of plays. He wasn't alone. Norman Powell had the playoff game of his life. Nah, literally the playoff game of his life, a career high 42 points. Other end, it's that man again, the easy money sniper. And then right before the half, straight down the lane, Chris Paul. He struggled in this one, but got that deuce to go. Clippers down at the half, third quarter. More good Phoenix. It's Booker for three. And then Booker with the steal. It's Devin to the rack. Phoenix now up by double digits. The Clippers go to Westbrook for a rally. It's Russell inside attacking relentless in his approach. But the Clippers just didn't have many answers in the second half defensively for Phoenix. You saw Kevin Durant with no resistance as he throws it down. And then Booker, he had some resistance. He just didn't care. And and one puts Phoenix back up by double digits. Fourth quarter, Chris Paul cleaning up the mess that he made. And then it's Booker getting to his spot and just showing you He's more than a wicked jump shot. Suns up 10. Are the Clippers done? Not just yet. It's Powell for three. And then Torrey Craig responds with a three of his own. Devin Booker is going to go and one. 45 points for Booker. Phoenix seemingly about to win this game. But once again, the Clippers show some fight. Even without Kawhi, obviously no Paul George either. It's Powell with the four-point play. Here's where the game ended for Los Angeles. Bones Highlands got a look that would have cut it to a two-point deficit with 20 seconds to go. That three goes in and out. And it's the Phoenix Suns taking the two games to one series lead with a win over a Clippers team that just kept on fighting no matter who was out there on the court. Still no Kawhi. Russell Westbrook and the Clippers came close to pulling off the game three upset. Now it's game four. Kevin Durant and the Phoenix Suns looking to take a command and 3-1 series lead over the Clippers. Boy, did they get off to a good start in large part due to KD's new co-star. Devin Booker continues to start the playoffs sensationally. Russ been shooting the ball sensationally as well. He knocks in the three. It's the Clippers taking a two-point lead. How about the hustle and the grind from this Clippers squad? Off the Terrence Mann miss, it's Plumlee with the rebound, the pass to Eric Gordon, who nails the tray ball. Clippers up nine. Suns make a spurt. It's CP3 to DeAndre Aiden inside. Then it's CP3 to Kevin Durant outside. And then it's Devin Booker to Kevin Durant from the mid-range. All facets of Phoenix Suns scores, games being shown. As you see, Kevin Durant blowing past his former teammate while Russ was arguing a travel call. No travel, no chance. Brody, it's like, all right, I'll just take matters into my own hands. He throws it down with the left and then finds his fellow UCLA alum. Norman Powell had the game of his life in game three. Not as good in game four, but still put up some buckets, knocks in the three there. Third quarter, I want you to understand what the Clippers are trying to do here shorthandedly. Uh, definitely not an easy task. No PG, no Kawhi. As you see, Devin Booker just making plays all over the court for himself and others. A couple of mid-range jump shots. Then he found Kevin Durant for three. And this time around, Booker is the beneficiary of some beautiful passing. 
Booker finally takes a break from the score, and then you got to deal with this dude. It's Durant for three. KD on the crossover. Durant led Phoenix in scoring with 31. Booker wasn't too far behind. He had 30. It's a five-point game. Clippers still fighting. That's been the mantra of this team this postseason. They've been led by their acquisition right past the trade deadline. Russell Westbrook, who continues to ball out. It's just a four-point game in L.A. But then here comes that Phoenix Big Four. Aiden with the deuce. And then Chris Paul with the three. CP3 really struggled to figure it out in game three. Like Tunchi, he had no worries in game four. 19 points, nine assists. DeAndre Aiden, 15 points, 13 rebounds. This series shifts back to Phoenix. The Suns got a chance to close it out in five. Well, there are three things I want to take away from these two games, and I want to give them all some time here. So bear with your boy. Please chime in wherever you see fit. But there were three things for me that stood out in these two games that I definitely want to highlight all three. We're going to do Russell Westbrook first. I'll do the Phoenix Suns big three second. And then obviously I want to give a, a pretty lengthy amount of time to Kawhi Leonard. We'll save Kawhi for last because I do got some thoughts, ladies and gentlemen, on the future of Kawhi Leonard. Number one, I want to talk about Russell Westbrook because he's not going to get a lot of love on Monday morning. You know, I am a lot of things. I am not perfect, ladies and gentlemen. I'm a 29-year-old young man that's still trying to figure out life. I'm starting – look, now that I'm about to be 30 in like, like seven, eight months, I'm starting to throw the word young out more and more. Like if, when I was like 24, it's like, yo, I'm 24 years old. Let me make sure y'all know I still look at myself as a young man. Uh, I'm, I'm a lot of things, ladies and gentlemen, but I, I take pride in not being a liar. You know, I'm not to say that I'm perfect and not to say that I'm not capable of lying. I try my best not to lie, though. That's one of my things. Like one of the things is I come on this platform and give y'all information. I give y'all news. I give y'all my opinions, my takes, all that great stuff. It's It, it matters to me that y'all believe me. Like, my job is kind of based on, like, there being an integrity thing here. So I try to come on this platform and be honest. Whatever I believe, whatever I say, I want you to know I believe it. Whether it's right, wrong, or, you know, whether you agree with my take or not, I want you to know that I believe what I say. Y'all know over the years, if you're a longtime subscriber of this platform, I have never shied away from being critical of Russell Westbrook. Um, the first year in Los Angeles – you want to see some classic videos? Go look at some of those games and some of my commentary after. I have never shied away of being critical of Russell Westbrook. I, can't, I just got to be honest with y'all, and, and I say this seriously, man. After going 30 points and 12 assists, I believe, in game two, uh, three, excuse me, and then going for 37 in game four, I have to be honest with y'all. Even more... I'd say every year but the first, the year that Russ won MVP, every year but that one, this is probably my second favorite Russell Westbrook season ever. Do you understand what I'm telling you? Listen, ladies and gentlemen, the man played for two teams in this season. His name was bounced around in trade talks the entire first half of the season. The team that he got traded from, by the way, has been better without him. But I want to make no mistakes about it. With Kawhi Leonard going down for the Clippers, if they didn't have Russell Westbrook, they would have been really doomed. The only thing that kept them competitive was the energy, the spirit, the competitive nature, the love of the game, the passion, whatever you want to call it, of their new leader, Russell Westbrook. There are so many thoughts I have about Russell Westbrook and how he's produced not only on the offensive end of the court, he's making shots. He's attacking the rim. We know he's going to do that, but he's knocking down three-pointers at a clip that's a little much better than what we expect from him from there. And then also on the defensive end, he's just going hard. He's playing really hard. He's got the assignment of Kevin Durant on defense more times than not. And offensively, he's... Option one, two, and three for the Clippers with Kawhi and Paul George both being out. And to take it a step further, let's talk about Kawhi and PG not being available, right? 
Russell Westbrook is 34, right? He's still healthier than every other star in the league. Nobody's going to tell you that. Russell Westbrook is the healthiest star in the NBA right now. You name a star that's healthier than Russell Westbrook. Y'all know I love me some Giannis. Giannis gets hurt more than Russell Westbrook does. It's a fact. Joel Embiid about to win the MVP of the league. He gets hurt more than Russell Westbrook. Nikolai Jokic didn't want two of them things back to back. He's been a very healthy player. This season, Russell Westbrook was healthier than Nikolai Jokic. And I know Russell Westbrook has bounced around roll to roll, but y'all know he plays harder than anybody on that court. So don't give me that. He plays hard every step of the way. He's got a lot of miles on his body. This is the healthiest star in the NBA, and he was two seconds away from not having a job. Y'all know on this platform, I've told y'all countless times, I thought this was the last year of Russell Westbrook's career. Now I'm a little confused. Because what I just watched him do for the Clippers, without him, they would be done. And they're still done. But they'd be really done without Russell Westbrook. I hope that made sense. I want to get that man his flowers. There was a story that Patrick Beverly told on one of his podcasts a couple weeks ago. He said he was on a, you know, on a team playing with, with Russ when he was a Laker and Russ was a Laker. He said he looks over at Russ's his salad. And he realizes that Russell Westbrook is eating a salad with no dressing. You, you know what I'm talking about. You know, you just, you guzzle your salad and ranch dressing. Don't get mad. I'm not, look, I'm not even judging you because I do too. I love me some Caesar. Who I love me a Caesar salad. Lord, have mercy. I'll just eat them things all day. Yes, Russell Westbrook was eating a salad lettuce only, y'all. And even that, like, that, that speaks to his body, his commitment to greatness. He's still doing it. You think Carmelo Anthony at 34 was doing that? Come on, bro. I just want to take some time to show love to Russell Westbrook. Now, the second thing I want to do is show love to the Phoenix Suns. Game four was the first time where they all had it rolling. You know, that was the best Phoenix Suns performance they've had thus far since they've been together, you know, with Kevin Durant in the lineup. It's one of the Phoenix Suns' best game as a team in a long time, if you want me to be honest with you. Um even dating back to this entire season, before they even acquired Kevin Durant. A lot of their wins have been Devin Booker just kind of playing miracle ball. This was a team effort in which Chris Paul, who, by the way, admitted after game three, he was really bad in game three. Yo, CP3 is like, yo, I've never been open that much in my life, and I think he kind of played with his mind. It was like a little, it was a cluster in his brain. This is Chris Paul, first battle Hall of Famer. He's wide open right now because Kevin Durant and Devin Booker are going crazy. They're, they're just lethal assass assassins. Booker's playing out of his mind right now. Booker's playing at an MVP level right now. I've never seen him play like this on both ends of the court. He is just ridiculous right now. Mix in Kevin Durant, who's still just unguardable. More times than not, if you don't double him. For the first time, I looked at that Phoenix Suns team offensively, and I said, you know what? It resembles... Kevin Durant's Golden State Warriors team on that end of the court. Now, they're nowhere near as good defensively. Um, the Clippers have run out of bodies. I would like to see Phoenix against another team. But if, for the first time, I was like, man, Devin Booker is better than what Klay Thompson was when KD was playing with him. Now, obviously, there's no Steph. Chris Paul ain't nowhere near there. The way they played, though, in, in, in game three and game four, Kevin Durant and Devin Booker specifically, I'm looking around like, yo, this is one of the best, if not the best, compliment to Kevin Durant's game he's ever had. And obviously, on the other end, that's true. Kevin Durant is the best compliment to Devin Booker's game he's ever had. So, I mean, just Phoenix, they look great. This Denver-Phoenix series, you know, everybody's talking about out west. We might get the Lakers versus the Warriors or Memphis versus the Warriors or Memphis versus the Kings, you know, Lakers versus Kings. I'm not so sure the most anticipated second-round matchup in the West might not be this Phoenix-Denver series. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. And last but not least, I did want to spend a good amount of time talking about Kawhi Leonard. You know, I did see a clip from Stephen A. Smith over at ESPN, and he did say um, he thought Kawhi Leonard should retire. And, you know, I understand the sentiment. I definitely... 
every now and then, you know, you get you get an update on your phone. If you got your Twitter notifications turned on for Woj or Shams or shout out my guy Chris Haynes, you'll get an update and you're like, man, so Kawhi Leonard's not playing tonight. Kawhi Leonard, and it's frustrating. It's demoralizing. The ESPN notification come in. Kawhi Leonard is ruled out. And it's one thing to see it in the regular season, but now we're in the playoffs, right? It's uh, you, you, Kawhi Leonard low managed in the regular season for this moment. And now what happens when the moment is not the moment? He can't play. And I'm starting to believe Kawhi Leonard's not one of these guys that is just not playing because he doesn't want to play. I think this brother's hurting. You know, I, I was listening to Jalen Rolls, ironically, on the same network as Stephen A. And he was like, if you ever see Kawhi Leonard, because I've never seen Kawhi Leonard, like, at a, like at a, I've seen a lot of players, like, you know, just randomly, like, you know, practicing or, you know, hooping at certain spaces in the summertime. I've never seen Kawhi. He doesn't really be around like that. You know, Jalen Rose was saying Kawhi Leonard, you know, when he's just walking day to day, you, you see a noticeable limp oftentimes with him. And I was like, yo, that's – Kawhi's not that old, man. You know, Kawhi's had a lot of time off, all things considered, in his career. You know, again, he plays hard on both ends of the court, but, yo, man, he's aged himself. He, he looks older than LeBron. You know, he's like old, like LeBron's 38, 37, 38. Like, what, what is going on with his body? I went and did a deep dive, and, uh, you know, every Kawhi teammate says he does the right things with his body. He don't put no junk in his body. He takes care of himself, you know, at an elite level. I'm just lost why he continues to have these injuries. And I do believe we're at the point now, you know, the Clippers owner Steve Ballmer is a very rich man. I actually met him recently, by the way. Uh, I, I Actually, let me not say I met him. Me and my wife ran right past him at a Clippers game. Um, and we didn't even, I didn't realize it was him until after I passed Bob. I was like, oh my God, that's one of the top 10 richest people in the world. I'm an idiot for not saying anything to him. Anywho, um, Steve Ballmer is so rich. You know, go, go look at the Clippers owner's net worth. He's pretty much got the net worth of every other owner in the NBA combined. I think he's so rich. He's at all the games. He, he, Kawhi's lucky he plays for him. Anybody else probably would have traded him by now. You know, Steve Ballmer's just, he's, he's up, up. He's, he's just got throwaway money, and we're being honest. He's like 70, 80. It's like, uh, it's like Jeff Bezos. It's like Elon Musk. It's like all these super rich Bill Gates. And then like a couple spots right under them, it's Steve Ballmer, the owner of the Clippers. And I think Kawhi has benefited from Steve just being a big super basketball fan and just too rich to even care, um, not to care about the product, but – not to care about giving up on Kawhi. The Clippers got a new arena coming. You know, there are reasons why Steve you know, has not given up on Kawhi yet. But we are reaching that point where, you know, you just can't get a healthy playoff run out of him. And not even Paul George, for the most part, he gave you one run. But these dudes are banged up. They're hurt. Somebody said, uh, what if Kawhi becomes a six-man? And I'm starting to think there might be some validity in that. I think the pressure of him being an all-star starter – in this league, I think the pressure on his knees, the, you know, just, I'm not so sure he can deal with this any longer. I think we need to start looking at, like, maybe a six-man role for Kawhi Leonard, y'all. I'm serious, man. This is – this is he's unreliable. I, I love the brother's game. It's a treat to watch him play. But every year it gets less and less, it feels like. And now the Clippers are not even getting him in the playoffs. The rumor around the block is – you know, Ty Lue might step down as Clippers coach after this year. That's the word on the block that Ty Lue might step down. And if there's some validity in that, we'll see what happens. Nick Nurse is now a free man. My expectation is he'll be the next Clippers coach if Ty Lue, who's done a phenomenal job with what he's had, if he steps down, we shall see. I don't know what you do with Kawhi. Somebody said this as well. I'm, I'm, I'm using a lot of somebody saying, y'all, but, but I thought I've heard some good stuff on Kawhi over the last few days. Somebody said... Instead of looking at Kawhi Leonard as a healthy player that gets injured, if you look at him through the different lens of Kawhi is actually a very injured man that actually miraculously is healthy sometime, then everything kind of makes a little more sense. This dude is hurting, y'all, and he just cost his Clippers team that played super hard without him. He cost them two games. With Kawhi in that lineup, the Clippers looked like they had a chance not to just get one, but two games and put some real pressure 
on a Phoenix Suns team that got some very high expectations. I feel bad for that Clippers fan base. I got to meet a lot of Clippers fans. I did a Clippers game in L.A. this year. Um, I got to meet a lot of passionate Clippers fans. You, ironically, the game that I went to, Kawhi didn't play. He just, like, randomly didn't play. Everybody's like, wait, Kawhi's not playing? Where's he at? He just wasn't there. You know, I tend to believe the Clippers have to make a decision on Kawhi. I think he's got one year left on his deal. This is sad, y'all. This man can't stay healthy to save his life. And now the Clippers look up and it's like, wait, should they be giving Russell Westbrook $25, 30000000 million next year? A guy that they brought in as a, a guy to just kind of control the offense? He's the only guy left standing at the star level for the Clippers. How could you walk into next year without Russell Westbrook I think it's the real question for the Los Angeles Clippers after what we just saw, especially in games three and four.